If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at cottageblogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Hello again and welcome to another episode of Vacation Rental Success. And uh, yeah, spring's here at last. Mind you, I think I said that about three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago, maybe two months ago. I thought on New Year's, on, on Christmas Day, when I took my grandchildren to the beach on Christmas Day, it was just like, oh yes, yeah, spring is here. It's nice and early. Do you know, I think I'm just going to stop talking about the weather. It's, uh, it's so up and down. But uh, but I have to say one thing, you know, regardless of the weather, our business is just booming. I'm blown away with the volume, with the demand for our cottage, uh, for, our, for our Ontario cottages this year. I mean, it's always high. We know July and August will rent. That's that's just about a given. It's It's like a rite of passage for people in in Ontario, in the city in particular, that uh, that this is what you do. You go to a cottage in the summer. And certainly when you've got small children, you introduce them to the countryside by taking them to a, to a waterfront cottage. You teach them how to fish, how to kayak, how to canoe, how to swim. So it goes without saying really that, um, that our summers are pretty busy. But, but the demand this year, probably 20 to 25 percent up on on last year. And that's a, that's at this time of year. So we've, we've we, we started um, renting out our you know, we start our rental season back in November. So that's when we open up the the, the upcoming summer season. And November was was great. January, uh, December was was pretty good. January was amazing. February, March. And and now into April, and it shows no sign of stopping. And we have a massive last minute uh, business as well. And so that we know that even the properties that I'll be listing over the next uh, the next month or two, um, because after the Cottage Life show that we went to a couple of weekends ago, uh, we will you know we're in the process of going out and viewing twenty or thirty, maybe forty even new listings for our website. And even if we don't get them up until later in May or June, we know they're going to rent for the summer. Uh, The the demand is that high. I'm even thinking, and I know my husband, every time I mention it, he just sighs and turns away when I'm thinking, do you know, we could go buy another property on a lake here because I love the idea of buying, renovating, filling it with rental guests for a couple of years and then selling it as a business as we just did with Osprey Cottage. That was that was just an amazing sale that we did. And I know the new owners absolutely love it because they they bought this property with a full summer of rentals already booked. So, you know, they, they bought it with the with the income for the first year already there. And of course with um with that cottage, all the rental guests this summer are our returnees. Every single one of them has been there three, four, and some some of them have been there six or seven times. So they bought a great business. So that's July and August. We know the demand is there. We really are trying to fill up our June, September time. September's pretty busy too. On on that topic, you know, it it it, it got me thinking about uh, you know the, 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 lo- the our location and how um, how popular it is with people in in the fairly near vicinity. You know, people are driving out of Toronto maybe two to four hours max to to get to a property. I've been following a a company in Cape Cod for a number of years called We Need a Vacation dot com because this is it's a small niche listing site. I say small; they've got over four thousand listings. But this is very much in their uh, in their close location, Cape Cod and and the islands. 
they know their area. They've got a fabulous website. It's very location oriented, you know, a bit like uh, smokymountains.com. Their, their website is informative. I love it. I, if, if I had a property there, I would be listing immediately on weneedavacation.com. So I struck up a conversation with Becky Fisher, who's their marketing manager on Twitter, um, about a month ago, about the time, I mean, I've, Becky and I've gone backwards and forwards, um, over time, but this was the first time we sort of had this direct conversation. We were talking about traveler fees and I was talking about going to Barcelona and, and I suddenly thought, well, this would be great to actually talk to somebody who works for a niche listing site and just see how they work with their, uh, with their homeowners, how they create great listings, how they bring traffic, and also how they, what they advise and recommend that their homeowners do to make their properties more attractive. Because you know, if you go and list on HomeAway or Airbnb, you don't get this sort of personalized service that you do with a a niche uh, local listing site. So it's with great delight that I bring you my interview with Becky Fisher of WeNeedAVacation.com. So I am delighted to have with me today Becky Fisher from WeNeedAVacation.com. This site has been on my radar for so long. It's one of those niche sites that, a niche listing site that's been around forever, or it seems like forever, and... It's like our own up here in Ontario. We have cottages in Canada. It's a bit like that. It, it's integral to our local community of owners. So I'm delighted to have Becky with me today. Welcome. Thank you, Heather. Happy to be here. You. It's a real pleasure to have you um, on the show. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Becky, um, where you're area of operation is, where you live, and how you got started in this business in the first place. Okay. Well, we represent Cape Cod, Nantucket, and Martha's Vineyard Vacation Rentals. We are specialized in this area, um, and I have lived in Brewster on Cape Cod for 10 years. Uh, The business was started in 1997, uh, back when the internet was young, uh, My role is uh, Cape and Islands Marketing Manager. So I spend most of my time maintaining our social media accounts. I do a lot of content writing and I provide uh, an on-site photography and consultation services for our homeowners. That is my favorite part of my job is meeting directly with our homeowners at their properties across the Cape and Islands, answering questions that they have about marketing and managing their rental and uh, photogra- photographing the homes, which, as we know, is so important that, that the pictures are excellent. So that that's really uh, my favorite part and, and rather seasonal, what, what I do mostly in the spring and fall. That, I, I am totally with you on this. I mean, you, you are, uh, we need a vacation.com is a listing site. I know that. And we are, you know, in Cottage Link Rental Management up here, we're a, we're a rental agency. And so, so uh, we, we go out and visit with every single cottage owner. We take the photographs of every property and, and video them as far as we can. And yeah, I, I, I'm with you 100%. That is the best part of my job. When I, I, I was at the cottage show this weekend and people were coming by and saying, well, what is it you do? Um, and I say, well, we, you know, we, we manage all these rentals and every one of them has been inspected by our staff. And, and they say, you do that? You actually go to everyone, and what a great job that is! So, so I, yeah. I'm I'm with you. I'm 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 sure you. you know, I, th- I think your company has how many properties? Uh, in the summertime, we've got about four thousand homes. Yeah, so I can see that you can't go and visit every one of them, but uh, but uh, you know you 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 offer that service where you can go and visit and take photographs to I guess to for the owners to then use on, on their listings with you. So uh, it's great. I just think if we were advertising our jobs, don't you think we'd just get a thousands of applicants? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is a fun job. My friends say that to me a lot. You know, 
because I get to see so many great houses, you know, everything from the small kind of traditional Cape Cod cottage to the large beach beach house and everything in between and, and getting to know our homeowners. You know, we feel so strongly about kind of that connection that we have with them and it helps them feel trusting towards us um, because now we're buddies. You know, I've been there. I know their house. I can help them market it more successfully because I've, I've walked it. Yeah, absolutely. And and just as I said at the beginning there, your your company is unique now in the same way as a couple of our Canadian ones are unique because so many of the smaller listing sites have just been been swallowed up by the the the, the larger sites and and for me it's just so refreshing to find that that, that you're out there you're doing it in such an amazing way. Um so just um, let, let, let's start with where your guests come from. Where, where do you um, find the traffic? Because um, we know that there's a home away, there's VRBO, there's Airbnb, and I'm sure Airbnb, are, 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 their, their tentacles will be reaching out in your area as well as they are in, in ours. Um, sure. So where are you getting your guests from? And has that, have you seen the demographic change since since you started working with the company? Well, yes, I would say we've seen a demographic change um, both for the homeowner population and the vacationer population. I think it's gotten a, a little bit younger. I think vacation rentals here on the Cape and Islands overall have become more and more popular over the years. Um, you know, home rentals have become the more kind of popular, affordable, fun, comfortable way for, for families to travel. We've definitely seen that trend here. Um, and in terms of um, how it's changed here in the past couple of years, other than, than that kind of shift to vacation rentals, um, you know, a lot of this is a seasonal vacation spot. People primarily come here June through October. Um, and so that affects kind of the homeowners who tend to buy a house here, um, they, they spend some vacation time here, they rent it in the summer, and then ultimately many of them retire here. This is a, a retirement community in many ways, the Cape and Islands. So that's, that's interesting. So the demographic of our homeowners, you know, tends to be everywhere from retirees to to younger people who, who see this industry growing and as a pretty good investment. We, we've definitely noticed that in, in our area. And I, and I think, you know, I, I'm sort of using our, our cottage country area as, a, as a, almost a direct comparison to, to yours because it is very similar. Um, we both have these, these um, seasonal uh, variations where, where we have you know, the season is, is June. I mean, ours is mainly July and August, trying to get anybody out of the city of Toronto um, before our Canada Day on July the 1st and after Labor Day is, is a real tough challenge. But we are seeing a difference. But the big difference we've seen, as I'm sure you have as well, is, is in the nature of, of ownership. Um, we, we used to have, it, it used to be the, the, the case, and we got, I'm going back to sort of when you started, the 1997, when renting out a cottage meant um, you cleaned out one cupboard, but you know the mouse droppings remained in most of the others, and right. <laughs> and they were lucky if they got anything beyond a the, you know the little tube TV with the rabbit ears. But right. but now we've seen that guests are coming in. They've got um, they, they've got different needs and requirements, higher higher expectations. They want higher standards. It's Absolutely. you've got to get this match now, right, between those guests and the accommodation that's being provided. Absolutely, there's definitely a higher demand for for the for the amenity. You know, uh, high speed Wi-Fi, uh, even air conditioning. Which um, you know, between you and me, I don't really think is that needed here. Um, but people want it. You know, they they want what they have at home and then some. Um, because they're on vacation. And so, yeah, that has pushed our homeowners to really up their game, both in what they're providing in their home and how they're marketing. You know, the the old way of marketing, gosh, when when the business started, people were, were mailing us Polaroids, you know, when we were scanning. Um, 
of course, those days are long gone, but the, that shift in thinking in, in marketing, you know, for some of our homeowners is, is different because they say, well, this worked great 10 years ago. And we say, yeah, but the game has really changed, you know? And so we spend a lot of time just coaching them and, and that's really enjoyable. It's, it's really fun. Yes. Yeah. And, and as I say, we, we, I think we're sort of sisters in this industry because everything you're saying, you know, is, is, is absolutely spot on. You know, Wi-Fi is our number one, you know, it, it's, it's a deal breaker now. If it hasn't got Wi-Fi, they're not interested. But very interesting. I, I spoke to a, I spoke to a rental guest uh, at the show this weekend and, and asked about what their priority was when they were looking at a property. And this lady said, you know, even though you've got all these lovely waterfront places, she said, I don't let myself look at the waterfront until I've looked at the bedrooms. Because if, if I can't envisage myself in a beautiful bed, in, in that bed, then there'll be no point in me renting it. And so I can't fall in love with the waterfront until I've seen the bedrooms. So have you seen that shift as well that, um, you know, you, you must remember the, the grandma's old throws, um, yeah. the old crocheted things and the flat, right. the flat pillows. And, and now we're moving to this. You've got to have your place staged to look like it's out of a magazine. Right. Well, and I say that to our homeowners who, who are hiring me to do photography or, or even those that don't and want to take their own pictures. I always say, really focus on the master bedroom. The master bedroom photograph has got to be excellent because often the person who is browsing your listing is the person who's going to sleep in that bed. So you need to be marketing you know, to that person. The other thing we're really hearing from vacationers, and we've really started to push our homeowners to, to consider, is pictures of bathrooms. People want to see the bathrooms now. And I think it's primarily they want to make sure that they're, you know, modern and clean and, and not 50 years old. But um, now we're encouraging our homeowners to, to display at least one bathroom picture on their listings. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, I mean, we're going to get on to this sort of whole staging of photography um, for, for owners in a, um, a, a bit later. But it, it's interesting that I posted a new property recently and the bathroom was really difficult. To, you know, as you know, it's tough to take a photo of a bathroom yeah. without getting yourself yeah. in the mirror and um, and without just showing a, a shower curtain. But in, it, it, all it needs, and I just take the photograph of of a pile of white rolled towels um, mm-hmm. on the side with a a little vase of of flowers behind it, and sure. such impact because. Even that tiny, tiny little image tells a story about the whole. So it, it tells a story about what the whole bathroom is look, looks like. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, I, I just want to just, you know, talking about how the, how the vacation rental business has changed um, in the past years. Are you seeing more investors coming into your market um, sort of alongside those people who are buying a second home for their own use and just sharing it occasionally? Um, I don't know that I have seen a lot of that. I mean, there, there's certainly, you know, local real estate agents who are who are managing rentals. But in terms of an investor who comes in and buys up a, a big group of homes, you mean? And and not not necessarily, but just is buying up buying a home just to rent it without the you know having that without having the emotional involvement that comes with you know it's going to be for my family and I'll I'll rent it when I'm not using it, but rather someone who says right I'm going to buy this property and I'm just going to rent it out and it, you know if we have the occasional weekend I might use it. Honestly, I have not seen a lot of that. Um, I much more uh, common is the person who, you know, grew up coming here and now wants a little piece of, of the Cape. Um, they either do intend on retiring here someday or they don't, but it's really a much more personal investment. I, I feel like, I feel like people are constantly saying to us, Oh, it's going to be so hard to share the house this summer. I wish that we could Mm -hmm. be there all summer ourselves. Um, so that's that's really the majority of stories that we hear. Yeah. So so you have you have your own. So the majority of your owners then they have a, an emotional investment in the property. How how do they how do you get them round to understanding that they're in the hospitality and travel and tourism industry? Yeah. Um, 
Well, that, you know, we, we describe it to them that this is a business. This is, this is not only the home that you love or your kids grew up in or, or whatever the story is, but you really do have to look at this at the end of the day as a business. Um, you know, the, the, the increase in, in priority and need of guest reviews has been a, a little bit of a hard pill for some homeowners to swallow. Um, and again, back to the marketing, you know, that you have to depersonalize the home enough so that people feel comfortable. And when they're vacationing, it feels like their home for a week in terms of like removing family portraits and, and that kind of thing. But at the same time, we don't want it to feel too stark like a hotel room because people like that kind of family feel about a vacation rental, I think, to a certain degree. So there's kind of a fine line there. Um, but we, yeah, we talk to homeowners a lot about being kind of business savvy. Um, they'll talk about, you know, their pricing. If they've set their pricing at a certain amount for July and then it gets to be, you know, they've got one extra or one open week, you know, come April, they get a little panicky. So they might drop their price and then they're worried about, well, what will other people say who have already booked? And we say it's a business, you know, it's, it's okay to have a sale, you know? Um, but I think there's so much kind of personal, interaction homeowners getting to know their guests um it's certainly feeling a lot more personal than staying in a hotel room and so it's a little harder for homeowners to sometimes make those what you might call a business decision a business move well what i've what i've like a lot about um about your website about the we need a vacation.com website is the owner's area that you, you know, the the wealth of information that you provide to them in terms of um, almost you know educational uh, yeah. articles? You know, I'm looking at one at the moment, um, re really that uh, that complements what you just said, and it was it was one um, written by by Elizabeth Whedon it says about the owner offering a personal perspective to distinguish your home. So right. you know, it's it's about giving away that information, the about you page on their listing. Right. So, so that yeah. you're, you're sharing some of that, that, that some of that emotional feeling that, that they have about the property. And, and I see this so often, you know, if I'm looking at home away listings that so many people don't even bother with the about us section. And, and I tend to uh, move away from that because I think that that connection is so important. And then saying what's special about their home, why they bought it, why they want to share it. So, uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's a very, very interesting aspect. And I, and I love the way that, uh, that, that the site offers that education to, to the owners. Yeah, well, thanks. That's a relatively new feature. Um, and we were really excited to introduce that and our homeowners are, are really taking to it, you know, because it's an opportunity for them to tell their story um, and again, give kind of a, a face to the house. Um, so it, it feels, again, more of a connection with their guests. And I think it, it helps guests to really respect that this is somebody's house. You know, this, this is something that we need to really take care of. I mean, we, we find that just, just having that connection just promotes that res respect for, for, a, for a property. So things are, things are changing in the industry. We know this. <laughs> they, they sure are. They, you know, it's, it's a rapid change. It's, it's a pretty shocking change in, in places. And I, you know, we, we, we can all sit back and say how awful, how awful, but you know, we, we've got to do, um, we've got to do, you know, be proactive about it and, and make perhaps changes rather than, rather than making complaints. So, just, just tell me what you feel the impact that, in in particular, the traveller fee has had on um, on your the, the owners that list with you. Sure. Well, we're we're certainly hearing from a lot of homeowners who are who are pretty upset about about what's happening. Um, and we've written a couple of blog posts. We do have a homeowner blog, and we've written about um, you know what what this really means why homeowners are outraged um you know what what strategies they can take and and, and that really philosophically we disagree um that we we feel that um bo the book it now system which then includes the fee is uh is a large step away from what we've been talking about in terms of forging that relationship between the homeowner and the guest that it it 
takes away the opportunity for that conversation to happen where, you know, it's a mutual interview. Um, they're, they're both feeling each other out to make sure that the, that the accommodation is, is a good fit. Um, and many homeowners are trying to go around the Book It Now system, understandably, to avoid those fees. Um, but then, you know, what, what we're hearing and what we're seeing is that the, the ranking of the property listing is then compromised. So they're, they're in a bit of a tough spot. Um, we've certainly had a lot of homeowners, um, you know, come our way because of that, because they just don't want that, that system, that process, and, and, and feeling like their hands are tied, that they don't have a lot of options. So I, I think it's... I, yeah, I think, I think you've hit it on the head where you said, you know, their hands are tied. They feel like their hands are tied and they don't have the options. But, uh, you know, great that in your area they do have the, the options. <laughs> When, when, you're, when you're talking to homeowners and they're mentioning this, what, so what's your advice to them? To list exclusively with us, of course. <laughs> Tough to, to direct them in what to do because it's kind of a, a no-win situation. Like I said, I mean, if, if they attempt to um, not, use, you know, not use the Book It Now system because they either don't want the credit card, they don't want the automatic payment, they don't want the... Um, the lack of communication, then then their listing is not getting as much um, as many views, and therefore their bookings are going down. We're hearing a lot of that, seeing a lot of of those numbers come across um, where those inquiry and booking numbers are down for those folks. Um, and yet, I don't know that we would encourage them to then use the book it now because for all the reasons we've talked about. Um, so. I'm not sure what, what I would tell them. I mean, we, what we've just been doing is, is saying, Here, here's what we stand for. Here's what we believe. This is why. Um, if, if that, you know, rings true for you, then, you know, come on over. Um, but you're right. I mean, we were able to provide that option here. There's a lot of places, vacation spots, where there isn't as many other options. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right, and I've and I've heard I've I've seen this on forums and and in you know areas where owners are gathering, uh, sort of out, mm-hmm. outside of the the Airbnb and the and the home and the home away forums, um, right. where they're saying, well, what what can we do? Should we should we find you know where can we go and list? Because the, as I said at the beginning, you know, so many of these smaller sites that used to be around are 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 being um, are being swat or have been swallowed right. up so what about do, do you encourage them to have their own websites we do we do and a lot of our homeowners do have their own websites and and do coach them a bit on you know we, we do a little bit of coaching on terms of seo and that kind of thing um encouraging them to have a very visual website i think this has become um a very visual sell for people again evoking some emotion um, yeah, I definitely would encourage them to have a website, and if they do that well, um, they'll they'll come up in searches and they'll get some good visibility. We do have homeowners. We belong to all the their local chambers of commerce. There are 17 here that we belong to and are pretty active with. And so, you know, encouraging them to be involved locally like that because there's quite a, a culture here, a two degree of separation where everybody kind of knows everybody. So. so that is a powerful way to spread the word, mm-hmm. um, just being kind of more immersed in the local, the local culture and marketing. Um, it's, it's tough. It, yeah. It's tough. So, so what about SEO? Because, um, you, know, you know, how are you getting the message out to, to your um, prospective rental guests? Are you, <clears throat> are you concentrating on SEO and, and do, you use, um, do you use paid ads or, you know, and I know you've got a, a, a solid social media presence. Um, yeah. Which strategy is working best to drive traffic to to your listing site? Okay. Well, we, we do all of the above. Um, we, and be, luckily, because we've been around for a long time and, and had a, a strong, active site, we do, we do well organically in searches. We have done um, Google AdWords. We've play around with that, um, focusing on different areas. You know, we represent 15 towns on the Cape as well as Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. 
Um, and so we play around kind of promoting different areas at different times, depending on who we feel needs that boost. Um, we do a lot of social media. That That's really a, a major part of my job. And as you know, um, it changes about every seven minutes. So, <laughs> you know, we do Facebook advertising, which has been hugely successful for us um, and really an affordable way to have quite a broad reach. Uh, the targeting is is excellent and we can now measure conversions, not just, you know, not not just impressions like the old days and not even click throughs, but actual conversions where people are, are giving an email address as a vacation or, or as a homeowner. Mm -hmm. That that's been one of the successful social media um strategies that we've done we're, but we're involved in all of them we, we do very well through pinterest which i think is fascinating um and clearly recognizing that each social channel has its own demographic and so, so we need to have different content and a different voice um with each one slightly you know you can't just slap something up and and post it all throughout all of the sites i you know that's what we used to try to do and and found that that didn't work because there's a unique voice behind behind each social media channel and a different audience. You know, we're talking to vacationers and to homeowners and to, you know, people local on the Cape and Islands, people far away, businesses. We've got businesses that we collaborate with and who advertise with us. So we're speaking to a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. Definitely recognizing that, you know, the cliche content is king is is very true. We have a vacationer blog and a homeowner blog with very, very different content. Um, the homeowner blog is much more informative. Uh, we've written about 140 posts there all about marketing and managing your vacation rental, whereas the vacationer blog is really just fun, kind of eye candy, really just promoting this area. Um, not so, you know, kind of a soft sell for vacation mm -hmm. rentals, but really just come to Cape Cod, come to, come to Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. So, so it's, it's a really well-rounded strategy. It's interesting you mentioned Pinterest because just last week on the, um, uh, on the podcast, I interviewed Nancy McAleer, who, who is so strong on Pinterest. We had a great discussion about it. So I'm just having a look at your Pinterest board, um, your, your We Need a Vacation um, Pinterest board and and it's doing exactly what Nancy was talking about last week, which is is covering the the areas. It's 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 a it's a location guide, but it's also a vacationing at that location guide. So it's right. it's come here, but this is what you can do here as well. And right. you know, it's a great model for for anybody thinking about uh, about using Pinterest. I think. Um, I, I like the fact that you've got videos, you know, and I think a lot of people think that Pinterest is just about pretty pictures and don't mm -hmm. don't appreciate that you can post your you can pin your blog posts, you can pin videos, um, right. you can pin your Instagram images. It's just it, you know, it's Nancy called it a a digital scrapbook. And and that's what yeah. and that's how she's using it. But uh, yeah, I'll put it, I'll definitely be putting a link to to all your um, your social media uh, platforms so that listeners can go onto that and just see how you're doing it because you're clearly really successful at it. I mean, I noticed in your Pinterest page you've got, uh, you know, 2.6 thousand followers. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, th th these these are people who are actually seeing your pins in their news feed, which is, right. which is so, so important. Um, and I love the fact you're using Facebook ads at the Vacation Rental Success Summit. Actually, we have a there's a full workshop on um, Facebook ads with Afton Negrea, who's a social media strategist. So, you know, I've been talking to a couple of people about, you know, they scare me. The whole idea of Facebook ads scare me because, you know, it, does this money sort of disappear into a big black hole um, because they're, they're not cheap? Um so, so I'll be. I'm going to be attending Afton's session, her workshop session on Facebook ads now because I'm I'm very intrigued with it now that you've said how well it works for you. Yeah, it does work really well, and and there are so many different ways to to set up a Facebook ad campaign. So it is confusing, and it's changed quite a bit just in the last 
six months. So that's, you know, again, that's the tricky part is just when you figure out how to how to do one of these social media sites successfully, it changes a little bit or or they introduce, you know, different types of ads. And so then you got to work a little harder or or do it a little differently to, to get higher up on the on the news feeds. And it's 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 a game. It's a fun game, but it's it's always changing. Um, so how did you learn about did, did you uh, are you self-taught? Did you go on a course about Facebook ads? Yeah, I've d- both um, got another team member who also is really well versed in social media. And so he he and I work together and um, compare notes. And, and between the two of us, we we think we've got it pretty figured out. Um, I, I have attended some digital marketing uh, classes and expos uh, locally that have been really helpful. Um, you you mentioned I wanted to get you mentioned video. We're we're definitely recognizing that the use of video is is becoming more and more important. That that as our attention spans gear more, much more towards visual content and become a little bit shorter <laughs> than they used to be, that video short videos um, are really really effective. And again, nothing of evokes you know emotion more than a than a really well done 45 second video so so can you can you describe what you know a lot of people when they think about vacation rental video um sadly there are still so many of these about which is hauling your um your iphone through your property um with all the doors open and just (laughs) i mean you've seen these i'm sure (laughs) Yes, the, the videos that make you a little seasick. Yeah, so um, in your 45 seconds, what do you include? Well, we we see property videos as really focusing on the strengths of the home, that, that rather be a complete inventory of every room, that it's more important that you focus on the two or three or four areas that are the greatest strengths and cover those well, um, especially if you're lucky enough to have a place that, you know, has an ocean view or or beautiful scenery outside. I think video works particularly well outside when you've got the dune grass blowing and the birds and, you know, the flowers and all that. Um, it, it's hard to sometimes effectively video interior rooms, mm-hmm. especially if they're smaller, because um, then you kind of feel like you're in a fishbowl. But so we focus really on the, the larger uh, rooms that that are are the strengths uh, in that house rather than, than every single room and the walking tour. The walking tour can be done well, um, and and technology, cameras, even iPhones are making it easier and easier, um, but you, it, it is tricky. It's, it's, um, it's, it's also easy to do them not well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, you sort of captured it with, with this. You're, you're trying to capture that emotional um, appeal. For, for people who are watching it. And I know my son did one. I'll put a, a link to his video on these show notes because um, although the video is a little out of date and he's had a renovation done since then, the video opens with um, with him throwing a dog, uh, throwing a dog, <laughs> him throwing oh, a that- stick for his dog along his uh, beach. And the dog's yeah. running to pick the stick up and the surf's, you know, the, the, the waves are coming in. And it's just, you could probably stop it at that because right. anybody out there with a dog who wants, you know, who wants a pet friendly property is immediately going, oh my God, I want my dog to do that. <laughs> right. It's such a powerful first impression. Yeah. Um, so, it, so it could, as, as you mentioned, you know, the grass is blowing in the breeze and of course you've got the you know, sound of birds. Uh, it's evoking that visceral emotional <laughs> response. And once you've done that, you've got them. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I, I've seen a, a number of longer videos that are, are really, really good, which are little, you know, they are um, interviews with with an owner about why they, they chose the place. And then and then it will cut, you know, obviously great editing cuts off to to the different things that they're, they're talking about. Um, so mm-hmm. would you would, would you advocate, I mean, you know, let, let's move on to the video service that you do to your, do for your clients. I mean, what do, do you offer that longer video or is it, are you looking more to doing the shorter ones? Um, the longest videos that we've put together for homeowners might be two minutes or so. Mm-hmm. Um, the fear being if it's too long, people are going to lose interest. Um, and so 
and so for those homes we do also maybe work on the the neighborhood um i mean we're all you know always telling our homeowners that you're you're marketing not just your house but your neighborhood and even your town um because not everybody knows the difference between the towns here and the towns are each very unique from each other so you're not just focused on the house you're focused on you know maybe the park down the street or certainly the local beach um and all of those all of those shots are are appropriate to be in your property video um we we haven't uh, done or encouraged much of the the talking like you say i i just i think that's so difficult in terms of editing that i think that takes kind of better equipment and a better skill set um it's just tougher to do so a lot of the the videos that we do or that we encourage others to do are set to music Yes, yes. And uh, just just tell us a bit about about the music and copyright. I, I just want to get this in because I've seen some videos recently and I'm going, oh, my, you know, I've I know that music. And yeah. you, you've yeah. just opened yourself up to to something by using that music and putting it out on YouTube. So I'm quite sure you're well versed in copyright law for audio. Yeah. And in the good old days, um, we had luckily a homeowner who happened to be a concert pianist and uh, gave us the rights or the, the access to all of his music. And so for many, many years, I was using his music uh, for the videos. And that worked great um, until he became more and more popular and YouTube suddenly recognized him as somebody whose music I shouldn't be using. Um, so that is really tricky. We do go on the sites, you know, the free music download loads and and access a lot of music that way um because if you have a video with with music either youtube either rejects it or they then start populating the video with ads um you know the little ads that pop up which mm -hmm. is you know not ideal so that is tricky we we do our best to get around that by downloading free music which is time consuming to find good good free music yeah, you can get lost in you know sites like um, AudioJungle.net, right? And and the, the, there's a myriad there's myriad sites that offer free music, but you start playing your thirty second bit, and then you want to hear the two minute bit, and and before you know right. it, two hours have gone past, and you still have it, and you can't remember the ones that you liked at the beginning. That that aside, there is um, I I just really wanted to get across that importance that uh, you know if you're using audio on a YouTube video to make sure that you check copyright. The same, of course, goes, to, goes for photos that, that um, the owners are using on their websites. Um, do, do you address that with them as well to, to, so that they know that they can't just go onto Google Images and pick up the, a photo of, of, of a local attraction or site and use that in their listing? Yeah, that has to been much of an issue um, because if they don't have the picture of the beach or the golf course or the attraction, then we often do. Mm -hmm. We've got a large library of stock photography that we've been collecting for years and years. So we'll often say, you know, oh, I've got that beach. We'll just put that beach picture on for you. Um, so I haven't seen that that very much, although we did, uh, Heather, have a homeowner this week who posted a picture of penguins on his property listing and um we were a little confused by that because we don't have penguins here on cape cod so then we encouraged him to edit his caption and he wrote something like um uh local local animals you know within five thousand miles or something like that so i <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that seems a little bit odd to yeah do that it's it's a bit like having <laughs> it's a bit like advertising a property in the Caribbean and having a picture of a mountain with snow on it. Right, right. So that 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 we have not seen that before. So you um you you go to um your homeowners who who want it and um and do the photography for them. Uh, what if they if they're doing uh, the photography themselves? What tips would you share with them for for staging a property for um for photographs and you know and or video sure um we have a list of those that we have written a blog about and we share those with with homeowners often um my short list of recommendations is to 
buy fresh flowers and put fresh flowers out. I When I go to a house, I set the dining room table for a meal so it looks inviting and, and ready to sit right down and, you know, have a lobster kind of thing. Um, definitely turn on all the lights in every room um, to brighten it up and then just, you know, simple staging, just decluttering, making the beds look pretty, um, all those little, little things that um, sometimes, you know, I'm surprised that that don't get done. Um, but th- those are the biggies. And, you know, obviously photographing during the daytime, um, sunny days work best. Sometimes, you, you know, experimenting with using a flash and not using a flash. When I photograph homes, I bring extra lighting with me. So I can try to make the house feel as much like July as I can. So that that's the list, I think, that comes to mind. What about photographing you- outside? Um, you know, you're, you're probably like like us. You know, we, we go out and f- photograph properties and we'll, we'll start doing it by the end of this month. We don't have any leaves on our trees until till mid to end of May. And it's really, really tough if we want to list something in April and... Um, but but we don't have any any summer pictures. How how do you get around that? That that is that is tough. Um, often what I'll do this time of year because like you, you know, nothing's really in bloom. We've got a few daffodils, but that's about it. Um, I'll take exterior pictures this time of year because I think it's better to have an exterior picture than than not. Um, but then go back you know, in, in May or June and and take a better one. Often the homeowners will have their own outside pictures. They tend to have outside pictures more than inside pictures, just in their, in their collection. Mm -hmm. So we often use theirs. Um, but you're right. I mean, it's, it's just critical to have things in bloom and it be green and a, and a blue sky, you know, all, all that is so important. And, and if that's not possible, um, is, is there anything they can do to to counteract that the impact of let, let's say all they can do is 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 a photograph with no leaves and it, it definitely looks like the photograph's been taken in winter they've just bought it they've got no previous photos um you know i i know with with our clients we just say well we've got to put the listing up but as soon as those leaves come out those photos have to be changed right yeah i agree yes and we also encourage our homeowners to write in the description or in the caption, you know, summer pictures coming. Um, same with if they've, you know, they've got a bedroom that's that's missing a bed or, or they're they're redoing furniture inside. You know, we we ask them to really write write about that, explain that. People will understand that, you know, twin beds on the way or whatever. So again, just being open and, and kind of transparent is uh, is often the way we we really encourage our homeowners to be um and and then do the best they can you know the next time you're down there and it's sunny get out there with your camera and and you know make those pictures look as summery as you can i love the way you say be open and transparent because you know it's something that uh, i i think that, that there's an inclination from, from some homeowners to either ignore or cover up some of the um perhaps less appealing aspects of the property but you know our mantra is no surprises ever yeah and right. I'm sure you go with exactly the same one. You bet. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, you don't want anyone to show up and be surprised and thus disappointed. Um, you know, a good, a good surprise is, is great. You know, when when homeowners love when vacationers say, you know, oh, my gosh, it's so much prettier than the pictures even show. You know, that that's, that's good. Um, n- not to say that you don't need excellent pictures, of course, but... Yeah, no, you don't want anyone showing up being surprised. We we definitely agree with that. I um, was just talking, meeting with a homeowner yesterday who they live on the property. So it's a it's kind of a little cottage and then an attached bigger house. And they live in the little cottage in the summer. And they were saying, do you think we need to write that in our description? And I said, you betcha. Yeah, <laughs> you, you need you need people to know that you're there. And for some people, for some vacationers, they, they'll be turned off by that. But that's okay. Um, you know, plenty of people will be fine with that. But the way that you explain it is that you're available. We're here if you need us, but yet we'll respect your privacy. Um, and, and for some people, that'll be really, um, you feel really encouraging and supportive. 
So, yeah, no, uh, definitely no surprises. Yeah, it's I fun, mean, it, funny you should say that about somebody living next door because I, I, we rented a property in, in the Bahamas a couple of years ago. And fortunately, the owners were not in. It, was a, it, was, it, it looked like the house, and, but we figured we'd got the basement area. But in nowhere in the listing did it say that the owners lived upstairs. Unfortunately, when we were there, they were not there. They were away. But it, there was nothing to say that the, they would probably possibly be there and be out on their deck when we were out on the, on the shore. Um, I, I don't know what I would have done if, if, mm-hmm. if they had been there. It, it would have been, that would have been a tough one. Becky, you've, you've shared so much fabulous stuff. Um, I can't say enough about we need a vacation.com and the website and, and how, you know, energized I am to see that, that, that this is a, a niche listing site that is, um, uh, still out there. Is there anything else that we haven't discussed that you want to, to share or add to our conversation? The reason that we feel like we've been very successful over the years and grown the business is because we are so hands-on and invested in the success for our homeowners. Um, and, you know, when, when they email or call us, we are right there. We are, in their minds, reliable and um, available and and really promote kind of the trust that that needs to happen between us and our homeowners and homeowners and vacationers and and just all of that support that needs to happen kind of from Mm -hmm. from every direction Um, so i just you know i just would end on that because i think that's what we're really most proud of is is really our customer service and um and it's it's led to having quite a, a a large loyal homeowner following well, I, I know if, if, if I had a property in that area, it would, it would feel far more comforting to me to have it listed on your site um, and have all that support than, than be just, just one, of, one of thousands t- hidden away on, uh, on one of the larger sites. So, so kudos to, to you and, and Joan and Jeff who founded um, WeNeedAVacation.com and, and all of your team. And thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Heather. It's been really enjoyable. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you, Becky. Thanks for sharing all that uh, informative stuff with us. Uh, as I said in the in the introduction, it is it's just great to know that there are those niche listing sites still out there. And I really encourage you to have a look and see what's in your area. Look, I mean, we talk about listing site independence but that it's not really being completely independent of the listing sites it's choosing the ones that are going to work best for you i mean have you looked to see if there is a listing site in your area or is there um you know could you get together with a group of owners and create something um amongst yourselves and of course I've mentioned Rod Fitz and the Association of Vacation, uh, the Association of Vacation Rental uh, Operators and Affiliates uh, recently. So if you don't have a niche site in your area, you could actually go to Avroa and, and create a small site for you and some other owners um, in your location or vicinity. So have, have a think about that. But first of all, really think about listing with your local listing site because they're the ones that are expert in the area. And, you know, even with the SEO power of the big listing sites, the, the, the niche sites that have been around, like, like we need a vacation.com has been around since 1997. And the same with our own cottagelink.com and cottages in Canada.com. These guys have been around a long time. They have a lot of organic SEO sort of built into their marketing. And so, so it's worth really worthwhile tapping into that. So that was, that was a, just a great discussion. And, you know, I just love having, I just love networking with all these people across the world who are so passionate about what they do. So I'm always looking out, as you know, for 
um, for podcast guests, people who've got something of of interest that they could share with the audience. Uh, I know if you've already contacted me, you are on a list. Um, with with just a weekly show, it's it's really tough to get everybody in. But you know, I, if if you've already contacted me, I will be coming back to you. Um, but you can always you know email me at heather at cottageblogger.com. Always love to to hear from you. Uh, there's a possibility that once we have the Vacation Rental Success Summit done at the end of May, we might start thinking about doing a, what, I, what I'd like to do is, is more of a series on um, owner success stories, maybe you know shorter little podcast episodes, maybe 15, 20 minutes, just with an owner success story. I'd love to know if that's something that would interest you. So you can, uh, as I say, email me at heather at cottageblogger.com um, and let me know if that's something that, uh, that you'd enjoy listening to. So as ever, it's been an absolute delight to bring this to you and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be talking to you again next week. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business. Oh,